So out of out of all of the patients that you've examined, what would you say the predominant time period it is that you've studied? Or is it just all over the place? It's really all over. It's is really it? all over. Yes, yes. I can study skeletons from the Paleo-Christian period, from the Greek Roman, from the I've been studying the Two two children of uh, King Tut in uh, in Egypt, for example. Children of King Tut. Yes, exactly. Yes, which were dead in the womb of his wife and sister, Angsen Amon, and we were able to say that uh, they died. They were twins inside the womb of the of Angsen Amon, uh, but the twins did not die at the same moment. One twin died the first, then shrink inside the womb, and the second died some weeks or month later then they were extracted uh, out of the body of uh, of Aung San Amon, but with two different kinds of development you see what i mean mm. and this was really a forensic and what we say pathological examination of the of the bodies what is it like to examine a, a egyptian mummy it's very fragile it's very um, it's very little because these were embryos. Oh, not embryos, fetuses. Uh, the fetuses, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it's really, and it smells very good. It smells very good. It smells good. Yes, mummies smell very, very good. What did, What would you compare it to? Because no, <laughs> not you. <laughs> you smell good too. <laughs> oh, no thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, I compare it to a cadaver. That's all. But because when you make a mummy, did you already smell uh, an Egyptian mummy? Not yet. Uh, not yet. It's on you my should. list. <laughs> you should, <laughs> because it's you've got bitumen, but you've got also many aromats. May, may, uh, a lot aromas? of aromas. Yes, aromas. Yes, uh, like uh, you've got salt and you've got um, botanical uh, samples that are here to conserve the body for a very long time. Ah. And all of this smells very good. Wow. And you know, I've got another story to tell you. Yeah. Um, painters at the end of the 18th and beginning of the 19th century, mm -hmm. currently used fragments of Egyptian mummies to make uh, a kind of pigment, which is red turning into dark. It's red with some metallic uh, reflections, okay? Mm -hmm. This pigment was called mumia, like mummies. Mumia. Yes, mumia. It's, it's a word uh, for mummy, okay? So, some famous painters uh, used such pigments in the end of 18th, beginning of 19th century in Europe, okay, mm -hmm. but also in America. So they paid a lot to use such fragments of Egyptian mummy. In fact, you take a fragment of Egyptian mummy, you crush it, you put some oil with it, you crush it again, then you use it like a pigment for paintings. What? Okay. I wonder who the first person to come up with that idea was. I don't like, know. How do you even do, how do you, who thinks of that? In fact, it's very, the, the color is really unique, but uh -huh. it's also symbolic because you think that, um, you know, an, an Egyptian mummy does not destroy through time. It's really, uh, it's, it was it's, conserved. It, it's preserved. It's preserved for mm -hmm. no, not only centuries, but millenaries. Okay. So you consider, yeah. millennia. So you consider that your painting too will be conserved the same way. You see? Mm. But during the French Revolution, so we are at the end of the 18th century in Paris mainly, some painters had the opportunity of buying fragments of the mummified heart of the French kings, which were not Egyptian mummies, but they were hearts that have been mummified and embalmed almost the same way. The hearts. The hearts, yes. So they bought the hearts of Louis XIV, for example. Mm -hmm. And my lab has been able to track the path of this sample, and we were able to find in the Louvre Museum in Paris, but mm -hmm. also in another museum next to Paris in Pontoise, two paintings that have been made with the mummified heart of Louis the 14 and Louis the 13, but the heart transformed into pigments. So now if you want to see the, f the heart of such kings, such French kings, you have to go to the Louvre Museum and to the Pontoise Museum. And when you see in these two paintings, a dark and red 
parts of the of the of the canvas of the of the painting these are the fragments of the hearts if you if you want the name of the paintings i can give them to you so i was going to ask you so you you follow the chain of transmission of the the mummified heart of this king and it went to a painter exactly yes yes it was sold during the french revolution it was bought by the painters and the painters used them to make two paintings the first one is intérieur de cuisine and the second one is vue de camp i can type them and i so can... did you have to go and like look up all the paintings that those painters ever created and then and then analyze all of them to find out no because we've got archives and we know that he did the such paintings frame. just after buying the, the oh hearts. wow that's fascinating if you want to see them yes let's see them let's see pull them up oh wait, we'll type it yeah okay okay so punch the, yeah zoom that in so so all the red is yes. is uh all the red pigments and the darker pigments are are the heart of Ex louis the 14. Uh, exact yes uh we the f uh the f 13 for this one and for the vue de camp which is the other painting it's louis the 14. this one is the father of louis the 14. so louis the 13. <laughs> And on the other one, Vue de Caen. This is it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, the second, the second on the, yes, this one. Yes, here you can see the red, the red people. You see? This, oh, wow. This is Louis XIV. That's incredible. And when we did the microscope examination of these pigments, we saw very clearly fragments of muscles from the heart. Really? Yes, yes. It's really, it's really clear. Yes. So you took this and put it under a microscope, and you could see this. Exactly. Yes. Then we did, <sighs> then we did proteomic analysis, and we confirmed that this heart is well a human heart. Mm -mm. And we were even able to find some proteins related to diabetes because Louis the Fourteen diabetes. Yes, exactly. Because Louis the Fourteen was involved by diabetes, and we found such proteins in, into the into the samples. Wow, man, that is freaking insane! <laughs> and he he was uh he was from you said the eighteenth century. Yes. Um, he died in seventy. Pardon, he died in seventeen fifteen. Seventeen fifteen. That's more than eighty years old. Wow. Maybe you can show us uh, Louis the fourteen. Yeah, show us a photo of him. Yes. This is oh my God! <laughs> Look at that wig. Is, yeah, the second one. Yes, this one is perfect. That's amazing. So so. Was diabetes prevalent back then? We we suspected it. We suspected it, and we had the confirmation by our analysis. Yes. W and and what would be the cause of diabetes? My understanding it's, was it's, that that's a recent phenomena. It's it's difficult to know. It may be related to alimentation. It may be also of. Um, age uh, it may be due also to uh, familiar predisposition we don't know exactly but mm -hmm. if you want to know we are still working on such samples because sorry mm -hmm. because we know that louis the 14 died of uh, an infection at the level of the leg okay mm -hmm. uh, it's supposed to be a complication of diabetes when you've got okay. diabetes you make strong infection especially at the level at the level of the lower legs yes. okay and especially at the level of the two and thumb um, for him we are still working on the samples and we are finding some bacteria and some fungi also that may be the cause of death of louis the 14 but understand me well we are not working on the on the cadaver in itself not the cadaver no 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 we are working on the remains of the heart that the painter did not use and gave back to the church um, because he, he wanted to, to 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 do it well so <laughs> he, he just used he just used half of the heart for painting and the second half the is intact the remains, is intact and, and it's it, now back in the basilica of saint denis which is at the north of Paris. Wow. So we are still working on such samples. 